It's Randy Orton. Oh. Oh. I have voices in my head. They count to me. They understand. They talk. Hey guys, what is up? It's Speed Lane Nano here, and today I'm going to be doing my Q&A, and uh, on first edition of this week's themed Q&A anyway. And um, this week it's going to be on um, my favourite wrestler of all time, um, Edge. I thought this would probably be the best way to start this new Q&A series. Um, and thank you guys for some questions, I got plenty um, in the comments. So um, without further ado, let's just get started with the questions. So, um, First question we'll kick off here is from Lundrick. Do you think Edge was a bit of an ass for what he did to Muddy? Um, yeah, there's no doubt. I think, you know, I come even you know even as an Edge fan, you can't deny that what he did was very dickish. It was a dick move. I mean, you know, I, Edge and Matt Hardy were friends. You know, I, I know they were very good friends. I don't know whether they were best friends or whatnot. I wouldn't say they would say they were, but yeah, they were definitely really good friends. Um, and obviously, the fact that Edge cheated on. Um, well, Hardy with Edge, and Edge kind of didn't prevent himself. I think it's a bit of an asshole move, you know. No, I'm not gonna, you know, defend what he did. Um, so yeah, I would, I would definitely say so. Um, so thanks for the question. Uh, next question is from uh, Pollock704. Sling. Um, this one um, is quite hard because there's quite I'm a big fan of Edge's ring attire like I really liked his um, I've always been a fan of his tights and the stars that he's worn. his like um, his um, ones he wore like early on in his career and I enjoyed the ones he wore like, when he in like 2004 but if I was to pick one I think I'd probably say the blue attire that he wore at Unforgiven 06 against Cena I think that was a really nice attire I think it's to go with um, I can't remember which pay-per-views he wore it out, but it was like this purple attire that he had. He wore it in like 08, I think. And then third, I'd probably say, um, he wore it in the one, the third one, I'd say probably uh, red attire that he wore in like 2010. I thought that was quite a nice look as well. Um, so yeah, I'd say favourite gear he wore was, yeah, um, Unforgiven 06, the blue uh, tights. I thought they looked really nice, actually. Um, how do you have booked Edge's retirement? Emerged. Um, so, from what I gathered, Edge said that he wanted to retire when he was about 40. So, I worked out that he probably would have retired in about 2013, 2014, maybe 2000. What did I say? So, I'm just going to make this quite easy for myself. And what I'll say is, um, have the match at WrestleMania 27 um, with Edge and Del Rio. Um, and then you get Christian involved for Extreme Rules, so it's like a triple threat ladder match. So it'll be Edge versus Del Rio versus Christian. And this is Christian would get the title here, and um, it'd be Christian's first world title win. And then um, basically, um, the next the next SmackDown Edge would turn heel on Christian. Um, basically say that um, Edge was always the better of the two um, and Christian didn't deserve it and you know um, and then they feud over the world title so then um, at over the limit Edge captures the belt back in a controversial fashion so I guess maybe a low blow when the ref's not looking and then a spear one two three such holds on to the world title so Christian uh, gets a rematch at Capital Punishment, and um, so then at Capital Punishment, um, you have again another uh, screwy kind of finish in which um, Edge retains. Um, so Money in the Bank, a stipulation is kind of um, put in that if Edge, um, it's basically no disqualifications. Um, no disqualification matchup, no interference, no bullshit, yada yada yada. Christian gets the belt at Money in the Bank, and then um, at SummerSlam it's essentially the blow off, um, the blow off match, and it's a basically a career threatening match. So whoever loses the match will essentially have to retire. Um, 
and Christian defeats Edge at SummerSlam 2011. Um, so, yeah, and I think that's probably the best way to go out. That's just something I've put up, thought off the top of my head. Um, so, yeah. Least favourite Edge title win? Um, now, that's quite a, a vague statement because it, it could mean any title. Like if it, it could mean tag team, world title, mid-card title. I think one that kind of stands out to me is when he won the WCW US title. I think that's just not very memorable, um, to be honest, and he didn't really do much with that. So I'd probably say when he won the WCW US title in 2001. I can't remember exactly when it was. I think it was around October, October November time, because I remember going in Survivor Series. It was him versus Test in a champion versus champion match, like for the Undisputed. Like both, whoever won them would get the Intercontinental and WCW, WCW US title. So, I'd say probably when he won the WCW US title off. I believe it was Kurt Angle on, I think it was a Raw or something. It just wasn't very memorable, to be honest. Um, next question is, was Edge your favourite from the start, or did he, did he grow on you? Um, Edge was one of those guys who actually kind of grew on me over time. And I, really, I think over time I really started to realise, you know, how talented the guy was in terms of, you know, being a lovable face and a hateable heel and just his great... Is, you know, he's always a guy that you could rely on to have a great match as well, in my opinion. And just everything about him was just great, from his music to his attire to just everything about Edge I just started to realise over time was just great. And I think that's probably why I would say he's my favourite of all time, because he just ticks all the right boxes. So, uh, yeah, Edge is one of those guys who kind of grew on me over time. And his final question is, do you own any Edge merchandise? Um, I do, actually. I own a couple of shirts. I own... Uh, the 2010, like, um, I don't know the official name of it, the, the, the show, whatever, but I call it the Rated Rockstar T-shirt, where, like, basically, it's got, like, the Rolling Stones, um, like, lips and tongue, like, um, you know, the Rolling Stones logo, with, like, the tongue and the lips, um, and it says, like, R, and it's got, like, a star, um, I really like that attire, actually, I think that was, it's a really nice one, it's from, like, 2010, I think, and I've also got a, um, the Are You an Edge Head shirt, which was around in like 2002. It's kind of like a, um, kind of like a maroon, not maroon, kind of burgundy colour, I guess. I mean, it sounds quite ugly, but it's, I think it's really nice. I personally think it's a really, really nice shirt. But apart from that, I don't really have any other Edge merchandise. Although I'm thinking of maybe getting some sort of poster, maybe, or, or something. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, as a matter of, yeah, I own a couple of Edge t shirts. Uh, so thanks for the questions, uh, Jericho Holic. Uh, next question is from Juicy Snorkel. What are your personal five favourite um, Edge matches of all time? Um, now, obviously, throughout Edge's career, he's had some awesome matches. You know, he's one of those guys that you've always, he's always, you can rely upon. You know, given the right opponent, the right setting, the right scenario, he can have. You know, a kick-ass match and I think it's always tough to make a top five just because you know you, there's some, you can, there are loads of matches where you're like oh crap you know I really wanted to keep that one in and oh well you know I feel bad leaving that one out but it, it was tough when I did the, the um, original video where I did like top 50 edge matches that was pretty tough just to put them in order and stuff but um I mean I'm just, I'm just quickly going to get this uh, list up. So number five is um, the no disqualification match against Eddie Guerrero um, it's on SmackDown September 2002. This is a really, really good match. I think in some ways this match is kind of underrated because I don't think many people really talk about how awesome this match was. And I think it's probably my favourite match on SmackDown of all time. I just really enjoyed this. I thought this match was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I think, you know, obviously the SmackDown 6 were known for having their, you know, renownedly awesome matches, and this is an example of one of them, I think. These guys really, you know, gelled in the ring, um, and the no DQ stipulation meant they could just go all out, and it was just a really awesome match, um, and I definitely recommend, you know, you to check it out if you haven't already. And uh, my star rating for that would be four and three quarter stars. Uh, so number four is the, um, first ever tables, ladders and chairs match from SummerSlam 2000. Um, this was a really, really fun match. Um, you know, 
do I really need to say that say much about it? I mean, pretty much everyone's seen the match. It's you know one of the best ma matches from 2000. Just some really awesome spots, and you know, um, it really you know it's stood the test of time. Like even today, you know, the spots are still mesmerizing, and it's just a really awesome match. So my rating for that would be four and three quarter stars. Uh, for number three. Um, it would have to be TLC2 from WrestleMania 17. Um, these, I think, I believe these guys really topped um, the SummerSlam match. Not by much, but I think they just turned it up that extra bit. Um, you know, awesome spots again, as I said. Like, you know, especially the spear on Jeff Hardy. That was just epic. Um, and the match just was awesome from start to finish. There was no kind of... Um, there was no slow... There was no, there was no bits where it kind of fell flat. It was just constant action throughout and I really enjoy this match things a lot of fun um, I give that four and three quarter stars um, and number two would probably be the um, ladder match between uh, Edge and Christian against uh, the Hardys at No Mercy 99 this is a really great ladder match um, this is the kind of um, what started the whole um, you know, Hart, Edge and Christian Hardys Dudley's kind of um, ladder ladder TLC you know, ladder and TLC matches. This was awesome. I mean, I mean, before the match really started, I mean, the crowd was pretty dead. But once you know these guys got into it and hit their stride, the crowd was just loving every second of it. There's some really awesome stuff here, and it was just back. You know, non-stop, great stuff. Probably the best match of '99 in my opinion. Just, just really fun. Um, and I give this match five stars. So um, with number one. Um, it's got to be the um, WWE Tag Team Championship match from um, No Mercy 2002. This was awesome. Edge and Rey Mysterio against Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle. Again, these guys are part of the SmackDown 6. These guys tore the house down. They had a great um, tag team match. Probably the best tag match in WWE history. This was awesome. Um, you know, it was. These guys really just knew how to get the best out of one another. And I really love this match I think it's you know one of the greatest matches of all time and one of the best matches of 2002 I'd give this match five stars um, so those are my top five edge matches um, thanks for your question um, next question is from weapon Alex how would you feel if Christian won the 2011 Royal Rumble uh, took on edge for the World Heavyweight Championship and set him to retire yep I would have been fine with that personally you know it makes sense I remember Edge saying in interviews, how he was saying, you know, it would have been kind of, I, you know, his, if he want the way he wants to go out, he would have wanted Christian to kind of retire him, so that you know, I, I have no problem with that, um, at all. I think that would have been a great way to go out, um, in my opinion. I have no problems with that. Next set of questions from Celtic Bird. Um, who do you think Edge had the most chemistry with? Now this is a really tough one because Edge has had so many great matches and you know feuds over his career but I didn't just want to do this based on match quality because if it was just based on match quality I'd probably say his matches with um, you know the Hardy Boys and the Dudleys so I wanted to kind of do it all round so you know like um, you know kind of promos and just the feud in general and the matches and I've got to go with The Undertaker I think Edge and Undertaker had an awesome feud in um, 2007 stroke 8. Um, I really think this cemented Edge as, you know, as a top guy. I mean, he was already a top guy before that because he was carrying SmackDown, but this kind of, this feud said, all right, you know, this guy is believable. This guy can do it all. And, you know, they had a great, they had some great matches. They had a great match at WrestleMania 24. Great match, a pretty good match of Backlash. Judgment Day, they had a nice match as well. An awesome Hell in the Cell match. And the promos I thought were really great as well. You know, Edge really kind of. Um, Edge's character um, of, you know, being the ultimate opportunist. Um, you know, it really f uh, suited well into that Undertaker feud in the sense that Edge would, you know, do anything to get the upper hand against the Undertaker to defeat him. And yeah, I could definitely say this was definitely Edge's best chemistry. Um, for me, who's your number one dream opponent for Edge? Now this is really tough because I think you know Edge has not faced a lot of people um, that are pretty you know 
pretty spectacular. I mean, the one, I mean, it was it was hard to kind of think of um, one person, but I think if you would kind of put me on the spot, I think I'd maybe say, um, and I'm I'm not I'm not going to include like tag matches and stuff, just one plain one on one matches. I'd probably say The Rock, just because I think those guys would really um, complement each other very well in the ring. You know, The Rock's very athletic and Edge is obviously just a great wrestler in general. And I think these guys would mesh really well and could have potentially classic matches if they were to face off. Most disappointing Edge match. Um, this one's pretty easy. I'd definitely say Matt Hardy at SummerSlam 05. That was just very disappointing. You know, they're given nine minutes and it's basically just Edge beating the fuck out of Matt Hardy until he bled. Um, yeah, I was just really disappointed by that. And... Uh, if you could have attended one Edge match or moment live, what would it be and why? I think I would probably say I would have wanted to have attended uh, his Money in the Bank cash-in from uh, New Year's Revolution 06. I think that would have been an awesome moment to witness live and seeing Edge capture his first WWE Championship. So I'd definitely say that one. Um, has Edge ever had a bad match, and if so, who is it against? Um, I've never, I wouldn't say Edge has had like a bad match per se, but ones that spring out to me as kind of not being that great are um, his matches against Kane at SummerSlam 2010. Um, that was not that great. It was it was all right, but just nothing that great. And also his match against A Train at Armageddon 02. But in all honesty, that A-Train match was much better than I was expecting going in. So I'd probably say Kane at 2010, just because I thought, you know, these guys that I, I thought could maybe have an, you know, an okay match, you know, a decent match, but they just kind of had an, you know, kind of meh kind of match. It's just I'd say it was give it like two stars, which it's not, you know, it's not great, but it's not bad necessarily. So I'd probably say Kane at Survivor Series 2010. Um, the final set of questions comes from uh, Prince of Strong Style 9 version 2 and he asks what would you where would Edge's career have gone if he didn't get hurt um, I think he probably would have dropped the belt to Del Rio maybe at Extreme Rules and they may have had a feud um, for the you know in the kind of spring of 2011 um but I think, um, obviously, Edge wouldn't have been there for that long anyway, maybe a couple of years. So I think he may have gone into some, you know, he may have had feuds where he put over young talent. You know, who knows, maybe he would have gone into a feud with Daniel Bryan. Um, you know, maybe he would have had an, another heel run. I honestly don't know, but I think definitely towards, to, that was, you know, 2011 would have been the kind of latter part of his career toward, towards the end. So I'd say he, was, he probably would have, you know, helped put a lot of guys over. Um, which of the Edge Edge which of Edge's themes um, is your favourite? Um, it's got to be the Metallingus theme by Alter Bridge. That is my favourite theme song of all time. It's just an awesome theme song. It's just an awesome song in general. Um, I would say biggest international dream match for Edge. Um, again, my knowledge on kind of international wrestling, especially stuff like Japan, isn't great. But one guy. I mean, I don't know if this really counts, but one guy I would have loved, I would really like to see Edge have a match with is um, AJ Styles. Um, I mean, I guess that kind of counts, because he is in wrestling in Japan at the moment, but um, I don't know if that counts, but I'll say AJ Styles. I think Edge and AJ Styles could have a really good match, and that would actually be really nice to see if they ever did, if they, if they had a match. I would definitely watch it. Um, would Edge have done something major if he didn't get hurt in 2003? Um, I think so. I, I don't think he would have won the world title. I don't think he would have won the WWE Championship. But I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, you know, he was in that... I mean, the last... He was supposed to be in that uh, six-man tag against um, Team Angle at No Way Out. And so, obviously, he was feuding with the WWE Champion. So, I think... I think... Um, what they could have done, I think what they what they may have done was um, after Angle and uh, Angle, you know, Angle and Lesnar feud. Maybe they could have done um, an Edge and Lesnar feud. Maybe uh, at Judgment Day, 
and part of the triple threat of vengeance. So instead of having the big show, ma the matches with the big show, maybe Edge and Brock Lesnar could have had a couple of WWE title matches. I think that would have been really good, to be fair. I think it would help establish Edge's credibility in the main event. And yeah, I think that really would have helped kind of uh, raise credi credibility, as I said. And I think they would have been much better than the big show matches in general. And the triple threat of vengeance could have been even better, who knows? Um, so I, yeah, I think he probably would have. And then into in the into the summer of two thousand and three, I think maybe he could have. I mean, this is just kind of me thinking off the top of my head. Maybe he may have slipped down into the mid card. I guess maybe he could have gone into a feud with um, with Eddie for the U.S. title um, for a bit. Um, but that's all I got really. I'm not really sure um, apart from that. So um, that was all the questions I have to um, to answer. So thank you guys for answering um, those edge themed questions. I really appreciate it. Um, I think for the next Q and A, so that'll either be next Friday or the Friday after that. There will be, you know, maximum of a couple of weeks. So I think the next set of questions that I will answer, I think will probably be on. I think I'll probably do this. This is just spontaneously me thinking here I'm gonna go for a ruthless aggression era themed Q&A um, so in this video in the comments comment below your ruthless aggression era themed questions and um, to be answered in the next Q&A video so thank you guys for watching uh, if you haven't already please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time